Hi everyone, my name is George Saito and welcome to this series station. In this section, I will introduce the environment setup in AWS EC2. One reason that you might need to use AWS EC2 is to get rid of the disconnection from Google Colab so that you won't have to worry about web page crashes and runtime disconnected anymore. But in order to use AWS EC2 as one of your options to run your homework, we have to do some basic setups. So I recommend finishing these setups in advance. Please, please, finish these setups as early as possible so that you won't be panicked as it gets close to your due date. We first need to access our EC2 instance via SSH, which should be taught in the previous video. But let's simply go over the process again. There are multiple ways to use SSH. Here, I will use VS Code because it is available in both Windows and Mac OS. We will need an extension called Remote SSH, which is available in VS Code Extensions Market. After installing the extension, click on the green icon at the left lower corner of the window, select Open SSH Configuration File, and click on the .ssh slash config file. For Windows users, it, it will mainly be placed at this location, and for Mac OS and Linux user, it should be placed at this location. This will open your SSH configuration file, and what we need to do is to save the information of your EC2 instance in this file. You need to write host space, any name you want, at here, a new line with indentation and host name. We need to go to our AWS EC2 instance detail page, and to copy the public IPv4 DNS address and paste it after the hostname. For the next new line, we will need an indentation with user Ubuntu. Notice that there are three U's in Ubuntu. Don't make a mistake. Then at the next new line, an indentation with in identity file and enter your file address of your PEM key, which is the key that you should have downloaded when you set up the security group of your EC2 instance. You can place the PEM key wherever you want as long as you can remember the address. I would suggest putting it under your .ssh folder. Now we can simply connect our PC to our EC2 instance. Click on the green icon again. Select connect current window to host or connect to host. Select the host name you have just set. At the first time, it may ask you to select the OS. We will select Linux here. Well. We have successfully connected to our instance. Click on the Explorer tab and click on Open Folder to add the root directory to your workplace. Select Trust the author here. Open the terminal for our next step. The next step is to mount the EBS, which is a storage system of AWS. You can understand it as the hard drive. A tricky point of EC2 instance is that there exists some storage space that is not ready for you to use. For example, if you are using deep learning based AMI with G4DN type instance, you will have 100 gigabyte disk when it is first launched, but it is just a default storage of any instance and most of the space is taken by your AMI, which is your system. Then where does the 125 gigabyte storage go? You have to mount it by yourself for use. Let me show you how to find it out and then mount it to your instance. In the terminal, enter lsblk to find the EBS volume. You can see that there is a 100GB disk called NVMe0M1, which is the default instance storage. Our target is this NVMe1M1, which has a storage that is close to our 125GB. The name of this storage may change in different instances, so please check the name here. Enter this command to format the volume of the EBS, and then enter this command to create a directory where the EBS volume will be mounted. You can pick any name as your directory name. I use data here. Enter this command to mount the volume, and finally, enter this command which gives read-write permissions to non-root users. Notice that there is a space and a dot after the W. Enter cd space double dot to go back to the parent directory. There is another storage service in AWS called EFS. EFS is cheaper, but has a lower transfer speed than EBS. We will mainly use EFS to store our environment packages and the configuration file for routine usage. 
because all the files stored in EBS will be deleted as you terminate your instance. That means this is where we will store all the basic setups in the end. Then, every time you launch a new instance, you only need to mount the EBS and EFS and unzip the file you have stored in EFS to your new instance then. So you don't need to install all the packages again when you launch a new instance. First, we need to create an EFS share. It is very easy to create and the only thing you have to do is to set up the security group so that your EC2 instance can access the EFS. Go to the detail page of your EFS, click on network and select manage button. Then you just need to add the same security group as your EC2 to your EFS. Then go to your terminal and create a directory for EFS to mount to. Copy the EFS ID from EFS detail page and replace the file system ID in this command with your EFS ID. Also, remember to check the region of your EFS. Running this command will mount your EFS to your current EC2 instance. Finally, run this command to grant the permissions to this folder. Now, we have finished mounting EBS and EFS. Our next step is to set up our Python environment. You can skip this step if you choose an AMI with pre-installed environment, but if you want to customize your package's environment and continue to use every time launching a new instance, I will recommend you to use base AMI and follow this step. You only need to do this step at the first time because we will store all our environment into EFS so that we only need to unzip them again in the new instances. First, Google Miniconda and find out the link of Linux installer. Right click and copy the link address. Then, go to our terminal and enter wget and paste the link we have copied to here using Ctrl plus Shift plus V. It will start downloading the installer of Miniconda. Then, copy the name of this installer and run the following command to check whether you have downloaded a complete file. If there exists any one digit that is different from what is shown on the Miniconda web page, it means that download is not complete and you can delete the file and re-download it again. Copy the installer file name again and run the command bash with pasting the installer name after that. It will start installing the Miniconda. Press Enter key to go over the user license and when it asks yes or no, type yes and enter. If it asks you to continue or not, just press enter. After finishing the installation, click on the trash can icon to kill the current terminal. Open a new terminal and you will see a base in a bracket before the command line. This shows that we have finished the installation of Miniconda. Then we can go on to install the required packages. Install Kaggle package with pip install Kaggle. Install Jupyter package with pip install Jupyter or Conda install Jupyter. Then you can go on to download all the packages that are needed for your homework. Finally, we are going to set up the configuration file of Kaggle and Jupyter server. For Kaggle configuration, create a folder named tilde slash dot Kaggle and drag Kaggle.json file from your PC or just create a new file named Kaggle.json and enter your username and key in this format. Both information can be found in your Kaggle home page. For Jupyter server, I will introduce more details in my next restation video. For this video, I will introduce the basic configuration setups. We first need to create a Python script file and copy these lines into the file. Replace password with any password you would like to set for your Jupyter server. This password will be used whenever you try to access your Jupyter server in the instance. Running this Python script will output your password with SHA-256 encoded hash code. Copy this hash code. Create a folder name tilde slash dot Jupyter and create a Python file named Jupyter under slash server under slash config dot py in this folder. Copy this script in this file and replace the string in the second line with the hash code you just created. 
For the port number in the fourth line, you can set it at, as any port number you like. Just to make sure you have set your port number in your AWS security group as accessible by your PC. This is the final step of this video. We will create a tar file that stores all the Python environment and other configuration files and save this tar file to EFS so that we can retrieve all the settings in a new instance. It is very simple, just running this line of command in the terminal. You can see that it includes Miniconda, Kaggle, Jupyter, and Bash RC. It may take two or three minutes to finish. With this tar file, we can set up a newly launched instance more easier. After you have mounted your EBS and EFS, run this command in the terminal. It will also take several minutes to finish. After that, remember to run this command. This command will enable the Miniconda to work in this new instance. You can see that the base with brackets is shown at the beginning of the command line. If you had any updates to your environment, you just need to update the tar file. Running this command, following with the folder name that you have made changes. Thank you for watching. This is the end of this recitation.